What is going on, guys? My name is The Rose. This is episode 27 of the Game Corner Podcast. And the Nintendo Direct just kicked off with Super Mario Maker 2. And what I am seeing, or what I did just see, is absolutely incredible. We are getting a look at some of the games from uh, the... Some of the games that are going to be coming out on Nintendo Switch this year. Super Mario Maker 2 is the first game announced. Right now they're showing uh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Which is a game I'm heavily, heavily looking forward to. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to be reacting to the Direct. Uh, much uh, in the vein of the way I did the Smash Bros. Directs. So I am watching the Direct, you're hearing it in the background, and I'm reacting to what I'm seeing. These games so far, this is the second game they're showing. This is, again, Ultimate Mar Marvel vs. Capcom 3. This game looks pretty dope. And uh, I put this one on my top 10 uh, most anticipated games list for this year. Not knowing Super Mario Maker 2 was going to be a thing, uh, I would would have adjusted that list. I see uh, the Hulk, Captain America, Wolverine, uh, Captain Marvel was in it. So far, none of these games have concrete release dates. Get ready to unload some boxes and have fun doing it. The critically acclaimed puzzle series Box Boy is coming to Nintendo Switch for the first time. This brand new game is tightly packed with tons of content, including brand This looks like an indie game, a uh, indie puzzle game called Box Boy. Mm. I'm not exactly impressed about this one. To restore peace on the box planet, you must work as a team, solve puzzles, and beat those stages. After completing the story, you can access a whole separate adventure starring Cutie, the tall one. In all, there are 270 stages to beat. That's the highest in the series to date. Use your brain boxes, think outside the box, Lead our heroes to the goal. Box Boy and Box Girl will unload on Nintendo Switch April 26th. Eh, I don't really care about that. The ultimate spring update. Oh shit. Smash Bros, what are they bringing us, man? The spring update. The Smash Brothers Ultimate is about to Version 3.0. With the version 3.0 update. What we got. Spring. What are we adding, you ask? You'll just have to wait to find out. Oh, boo! Remember, what a cock tease. Joker is a part of Challenger Pack 1. He's secretly been preparing for battle, and his moment will finally come before the end of April. In other words, this year, springtime is the time to smash. And don't forget, new Super Smash Bros. series Amiibo figures are on the way, too. I want to get that Ivysaur one. I want to get the Pokemon ones, all three of those. There's even more to explore in Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. <laughs> it's never too late for a journey through the main I didn't give a shit about this game when it was a mini game in Super Mario 3D World, and I still don't give a shit about it now. After a new update, all courses will support two player co op. Maybe Captain Toad won't be so nervous with someone at his side. Two heads are better yep. than one, and an extra set of This game was a re Wii U game. This got ported to the Switch. I still don't care about it. content is coming. We're adding in 18 new challenges that'll see you traveling to five new courses. From sunken ships to a kingdom of sweets. And achieving new objectives in existing courses. I'm going to turn my speaker off so you don't hear that bleeping noise throughout this uh, coverage. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker special episode will be available for purchase as soon as, well, later today. The rest of the content will launch on March 14th. If you don't have the game yet, look out for a digital bundle available on Nintendo eShop later today. Game and gives you access to Captain Toad episode once it's available. Next. Bloodstain, here we go. All new Gothic Castle. The 
side-scrolling action of yore shall rise once more in bloodstained ritual of the night. And so... I gotta download Curse of the Moon, man. It's free on the Xbox right now. Until Friday. So it means I gotta get on there and download it. With these powers, she can steal the abilities of enemies, bend gravity to her will, and dart about Jeebel's castle at lightning speed. That's pretty neat. Here, the laws of reality and 2D side scrollers don't apply. Throughout the castle, Excuse me, that's the soda talking. <laughs> deadly tasks and small touches flesh out the campaign. Your body is covered with weird decorations. Beyond the main story, you can dig deep into character customization, Ooh. subquests, and more. Stop the fall of man at the hands of demons. And don't be afraid to show them your dark side. This game's looking pretty tight. Bloodstain, ritual of the night, emerges from the shadows this summer. And before it gets another um delay. The time has come to build a new world and take on the children of Hargon. He looked like Super Saiyan Goku. That's not right. He's got the Goku hair. This looks like something out of Dragon Quest. At least it looks better than Minecraft. Next. There are more Nintendo Switch headlines to come, but first, a word from Mr. Koizumi. Well, how's it looking? Next. So far, I only cared about uh, two things, three things, actually. Classic RPG series. Please take a look. Ooh, classic RPG. What do you got? And then there's Dragon Quest, the series that defined the genre. And the latest entry is charging onto Nintendo Switch in full force, pairing the series' beloved style and perfectly balanced battles with the most impressive scope and elaborate story in series history. I never got into Dragon Quest, you know? I tried with the older games back in the day, but... I don't know. Maybe I can get into them if I try it again. In a non-twist of fate, the boy's royal birthright is snatched from him. On the day he comes in a dome, he finally discovers his true heritage and the powers that make him the luminary. Dragon Quest uh, 12 or 13? Is that what this is going to be? For guidance, he is dubbed Dark Spot. So begins the perilous journey of a hunted hero and the ragtag band of adventurers who will join him on his quest to set things right. Together, they'll explore the towns and terrain of the sprawling, detailed land, Erdrain. Graphics don't look too bad. Monsters roam free of random encounters. Will you engage them? Choose your strategy wisely in turn-based battles. You must know when to attack, when to heal, when to use magic, and when to switch your party members' orders. As you do, you'll earn skill points, which will be used to teach party members attacks, spells, and improve... Yeah, your, your typical goals. RPG stuff. You can also collect materials, forge weapons, armor, and accessories. Looking for an item? Then help people out in side quests. Or try your hand at the casino. Or horse racing. Horse racing? Ha! Huh. Erdrea is full of surprises like these. And this time, the player has the power to choose on the fly between the land's gorgeous HD vistas and the 2D 16-bit glory of all. Huh. Wow. This is also the first version of the game with fully orchestrated field and... That's field. interesting. If you want, you can change between the original sound and the new one whenever you want. And you can also experience the journey with English or Japanese audio. Here's Kiseki Dianza. Pretty much anything you would find in an RPG these days. Oh, I'm itchy, got an itch. Ugh. This this looks interesting. Although I'm probably not gonna play it. I'll probably watch someone else play it at least. I'm sure, Vine Sauce will play it, or somebody from Vine Sauce will play it.
first-time players and veterans should also look forward to new stories. Each sees one of the main cast members stepping into the spotlight, shedding new light on hidden truths. This hero's adventure has Dragon Quest XI. I was close. I said 12. <laughs> Dragon Quest XI-S. Launching exclusively on Nintendo Switch this fall. While we just announced the addition of these new stories, there will be more new information to share in the future. Please look forward to learning more. For now, let's continue with more Nintendo Switch headlines. A Disney Tsum Tsum game like you've never seen before. These stuffed Disney toys took the world by storm, and now they're ready for an after-hours party at the toy store in Disney Tsum Tsum Festival. Play with your friends and family in a wide variety of competitive and cooperative games that support up to four players. Yeah, it looks like one of those um, mini-game collection kinds of games. Yeah, certainly not for me. And you can't mention Disney Tsum Tsum without talking puzzles. Connect matching Tsum Tsum to clear them and set a high score. The game also features a two-player mode for local and online competitive matches. Disney Tsum Tsum Festival will steal our hearts in 2019. Next. We're picking up a distress call in the Atlas Star Starlink. System. Starlink. But this time, it's far from friendly. In fact, it's none other than Star Wolf's infamous lieutenant. Andrew Oikini, Pigma Dengar, and the Great Leon. Now Peppy, Falco, and Sloopy have no choice but to hunt them down, like the animals they are, in a challenging new series of missions you can only find in the spring update of Starlink Battle for Atlas. Every member of the Star Fox team has their own special pilot ability and skill tree, plus each pilot can take on any of the new missions and also Fox's missions from the base game. Yep, time for a game don't care about this game. Destroy. But don't expect Wolf to play fair. Look forward to news on the rest of the additional oh, There's some racing in this Star game, I say. And faction missions. So you're ready when the Star Fox team joins the Starlink Battle Nah, for so far this direct is a bit of a bust for me. Nah, show me something cool. A heartfelt fantasy adventure crops up once again. Another you got here. Season, another reason to wield weapons and spells against monsters. Yeah. Interact with townsfolk daily. I see twin tails I like. Cook some fish. Cook up a storm. Or even raise monsters. This fantastical circle of life will keep you coming back for more in Rune Factory 4 Special, fully remastered for Nintendo Switch. I've never gotten into the Rune Factory. I've never played the Rune Factory series. Looks interesting. Something I could get into. Heart-pounding newlywed life has in store for you, exclusively in this new version of the game. You know, something about the series is something I just never got into. Later this year. And Rune Factory Five. Rune Factory Five is in development. Look forward to more info in the future. 2020 release. <laughs> Soon, a time will come to slay monsters and rescue lost souls before those souls become monsters. In this action RPG from the developers of I Am Setsuna and Lost Sphere, step into a realm built upon the tenets of reincarnation. Its people lead repressed lives, forbidden to mourn the loss of loved ones. To uphold these tenets, Kagachi must travel between the living world and the beyond Whoa. to rescue lost souls from a terrible thing. That's freaky. Becoming monsters. When battling these creatures, the lost souls you've rescued can manifest within you, granting you new powers. Each soul's powers are different, so you must choose the right soul for the situation at hand. In this deep single player campaign, there will be many battles. You will fight. And you will become stronger. That's pretty cool. Those who fall to grief are lost, and the lost don't reincarnate. Oof. The very foundations of reincarnation will begin to crumble when Oninaki launches in summer 2019. Yeah, it's all right. Interesting. Yoshi! 
That's what I'm talking about. That's what I wanted to see. Oh yeah, next month, baby. What? And tear through the sky on a plane. Not shot, Yoshi. Hey, that robot's pretty huge for a miniature. Even at this scale, you'll have some challenging bosses to rank. Using in-game coins you've racked up, you can collect crafted costumes. Oh, interesting. If you wear one, it'll offer a bit of protection from enemies. Ha! Huh. That's There's cool. 180 of these costumes. Some of them can be tricky to get your hands on. That's a Labo costume. I saw that. Ooh, demo later today. Oh, yeah, baby. Gotta play that and upload it for the channel, baby. We have more Nintendo Switch headlines coming up. But first, another update from Mr. Koizumi. How's it going so far? Next, we have a follow-up on the latest installment in one of our long-running series. Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yep. This one was the only thing we knew about that was going to be shown. This will probably be the first mainline uh, Fire Emblem game I actually play currently. Well, not currently. I'm going to get it for Christmas. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a revered goddess, has existed since time immemorial. Three ruling powers now control the land. In the south lies a region long held by a more than 1,000-year-old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. Beyond its borders, to the frigid north, is the home of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. They sound like douchebags already. A league of nobles that heeds no king nor emperor rules what is called the Leicester Alliance. Once consumed by a tempest of war and turmoil, what about the West? Bodlin, and these three mighty powers now exist in relative harmony. Okay. In the Fire Emblem Three Houses game, you are the hero the world needs. You start out as a mercenary, traveling with a group led by your father, Geralt. After an unexpected incident reveals an unknown power hidden within, you'll travel to Garrick Mock Monastery, where you'll receive an offer to teach at the Officer's Academy. Around that same time, you alone begin to see a mysterious girl named Sophus, who appears within your mind. Garrig Mach Monastery lies at the center of three large territories. It is the home base of the Church of Saros, the main religion of Fodlan, as well as the Knights of Saros. Not only does the church serve to maintain order in Fodlan, its monastery also houses the Officer's Academy. Those who train there will go on to shoulder the future of Fodlan. The Officer's Academy is comprised of three Black houses. Eagles, a Golden the Deer, Black and Eagles is something. For students from the Adrestian Empire, including the house leader and future emperor, Edelgard. The Blue Lions boasts Prince Dimitri of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus as its Douchebag. This house is for students from his kingdom. Douchebag. The Golden Deer is for students from the Leicester Alliance. Their house leader is Claude who is the heir of the noble family that leads the Alliance. As a professor, you will lead the students of one of these houses and instruct them. In I'll go with the Black the Eagles, students, calling it now. other students to meet, each with their own unique personalities and skills. Which house will you choose? Black Eagles, all the way! Students are expected to travel to various lands, sometimes with the Knights of Saros themselves, and gain real battle experience, including everything from defeating bandits to suppressing rebellions. These may be class assignments, but the stakes in each battle are very real. 
Whether your students live or die will depend on your leadership. Yep, classic fire and them tactics. To claim victory. At the Officers Academy, your students will work diligently each day so that they may wield a variety of weapons. Master the study of magic. And acquire special skills such as horsemanship. You have been entrusted with their future, and it's up to you to guide each of them and help them hone their abilities. Through combat experience and study, you can help your students reach their full potential. I'm game for this. Your students can also interact with each other at the academy, and by doing so, their bonds will strengthen, and they'll be able to better support each other on the battlefield. I would hope so. That looked like it hurt. <laughs> you look like Marth. Why every main character gotta look like Marth? Forward, now. Three territories. Douchebag. Three houses. Your very own journey. Green haired girl is best girl already, I can already tell. Hopefully she's part of the faction I'm choosing. Fire emblem three houses. Will release on July 26th. So, how did it look? Originally, we announced that Fire Emblem Three Houses would release this spring, but more development time will be necessary. And so, the new release date is July 26th. As we just saw. That means we'll have to ask you to wait a little longer. But we hope you'll look forward to the next generation of Fire Emblem all the same. Time for some more Nintendo Switch headlines. Bring it on. Let's go. In this next entry of this iconic series, the last player standing wins. The fuck. 99, 99 players. players. That's a Battle Royale game. But only one reigns supreme. This is. Tetris. Tetris! Oh yeah! Oh my god! How the hell do you have a Tetris Battle Royale game? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, and it's gonna be in. It's free. Okay. A game. Available today! <laughs> yeah! Oh, hell yeah! I fucking love Tetris. I heard this game was alright, Dead by Daylight. Not a game for me, though, I don't think. Now run. Hide. I'm not, I don't really care for survival horror type games. And escape with your life, or take on the role of the killer to make the so-called survivors your next victims. Terrifying? Oh yes. Satisfying? Just you wait. With loads of maps, characters, and cosmetics to earn, you'll experience a deep... Uh, I think I know what I'm doing tonight. I'm going to stream me some Tetris. Discover the true meaning of horror. When Dead by Daylight creeps up on Nintendo Switch this fall. This dog will ruin your day. I already don't like it. <laughs> Delta Rune. <laughs> Next. I don't care. Fuck Undertale. Fuck Delta Rune. Get this shit off my TV, please. Don't care. Next. Now for a message from 
the producer of the Demon X Machina. Demon X Machina. Isn't this being developed by Psy Games or something? Uh, it froze. I can still hear audio, but the shit is frozen. Hold on a minute. Let me refresh. Maybe it wasn't supposed to do that. Okay, we're back to normal. Well, I'm not interested, sorry. Next. Realistic racing is headed for Nintendo Switch. Ooh, I like racing. Grid comes fully oh shit, Grid's coming to the Switch. Which one do I have? I, I have one of these on like PC. Is it the original or is it this one? Interesting, I have to look now. The grid games are pretty fucking cool, though. I like these. Have <laughs> motion controls? What? Ooh, demolition derbies. Interesting. Hellblade. Created in collaboration with neuroscientists and people who experience psychosis, Hellblade pulls players deep into the mind of Senua. This broken Celtic warrior will embark on a haunting vision quest through Viking Hell to fight for the soul of her dead lover. Hellblade has won multiple awards, including BAFTAs for performance, audio and artistic achievement, British games... So this isn't a new game then, it's just a port. Find out why Hellblade Senua Sacrifice releases on Nintendo Switch this spring. Maybe? I think it's a, a port. The Nintendo Switch lineup just keeps getting stronger. Oh, this is the last one, I think. Mortal Kombat 11 proved the Can't wait. Getting it on, hopefully, every console eventually. With all new custom Starting with the PS4, of course. New characters and returning veterans taking up the fight. In a fresh new adventure, Unravel 2 sees players take control of two... Unravel 2, Yarnies. March 23rd. Both Yarnies on your own in single play. Uh, March 22nd, I'm sorry. Local co -op. Eh. For the first time on Nintendo Switch, experience Assassin's Creed 3 remastered with revamped gameplay and Assassin's Creed 3. Meh. And I tell you what, though, Nintendo's getting a lot of fucking support for the Switch. I love that. I love that so much. Keep it coming, man. Wow. Final Fantasy Two for the price of one. Better open your calendars. We're excited to announce that Final Fantasy Seven will find its new home on Nintendo Switch March 26. We can also announce that Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon Everybody will release on March 20th. We're pleased to announce that Final Fantasy IX will journey onto Nintendo Switch later today. Once a classic, always a classic. Interesting. Wow. That's all for today's Nintendo Switch headline. Well, there we go. That's it. How's everything looking? Well, we have a bit more to share. Oh, we're not done. Please stay with us until the end. Oh, we're not done. Let's take a look, shall we? What else we got? What is this? The fuck? Ah, uh, the stream froze again. What the fuck? Alright.
What am I seeing? Is this near? Looks like near Automata. Stop freezing, god damn it! Oh god, that quality looks like ass. What happened to the video quality? I guess we're not getting any information on Bayonetta 3. Nah, this isn't near. It looked like near at first. Or is it near? Stop freezing! Fuck you! Must be something wrong with the YouTube app or something right now. What is this game? This looks pretty fucking awesome. This isn't Bayonetta 3. This game looks fucking badass. Ooh, get fucked. Astral Chain? Wow, that looks pretty fucking cool. Oh, it's made by Platinum Games. No wonder why that looks cool. They make some good shit. Just witnessed this Astral Chain, a brand new action game in development at Platinum Games. It looked like two characters were fighting together during battle, didn't it? It did. I hope you're excited to learn more about how combat will play out in this game. Please stay tuned. And speaking of Platinum Games, I'm sure you're very curious about Bayonetta 3. Yeah, oh, they are going to tell us. The developers of Bayonetta 3 are hard at work, and I hope you're looking forward to learning more. You got anything for us to sh show us? Will be the last announcement of the day. Please check it out. Nothing on Bayonetta, just the fact that it's uh, in development. What is this? Looks like an anime game based on these uh, visuals. Oh, it's a Zelda game. A new Wind Waker? That's what that looked like. Or is it just another HD remaster? Or is it a sequel to Wind Waker? There's a volcano. This sounds like Wind Waker. Oh, Link's Awakening. So this is finally getting brought out from the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color onto the Switch. And this game is like over 20 years old, isn't it? Is that a Goomba? <laughs> eh, you could have done better for your final announcement. Come on, Nintendo. Yep, 1993. So that game's 26 years old. After 26 years, it's been reborn as a new experience. And we'll have more to say in the future. Please look forward to its release. That's all for today's Nintendo Direct. Oh, the Metroid fans just got let down. Nothing on Metroid Prime 4. Nothing on a Metroid Prime Trilogy. Nothing on, uh... A new 3D Mario game, nothing on the new Pokemon, which, you know, we're going to get stuff like that later on in the year, but people were, were hoping for Metroid at least. Well, guys, thanks for watching part one of episode 27 of the Game Corner podcast. I didn't get to do an intro this time around because uh, this literally started literally at 5 o'clock. In fact, um... I want to see if I can find 
I want to see if I can find a trailer for Super Mario Maker 2 so I can get a good good look at it from the very start. Here it is. Alright, I'm going to watch this trailer from the beginning so I can see exactly what I think of it. First, we're going to skip this ad because fuck ads. Uh, skip ad, please. Yo, don't let me skip the ad. Fuck you, National Guard. Dickheads. Alright, here we go. Super Mario Maker 2. I'm going to check out this trailer from the very beginning. Whoop, you're dead. <laughs> oh, they're giving us slopes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They should have gave us that in the first game. I hope this game's not going to be as uh, very limited and it's actually going to put ROM hacks in their place. Looks like there's a lot of new mechanics. The Angry Sun is back. You could have the fucking piece of shit snake block trails, which I fucking hate. You could have uh, Super Mario 3D World uh, designs now. The cat suits here. What the fuck? Oh, you can set patterns for certain enemies. That's pretty cool. You can set paths for pipes, too. Dude, this looks pretty fucking neat. Pretty cool. June 2019. Oh, my God. Well, that's automatically number two on my list. Boy, I was not ready for Super Mario Maker 2. <laughs> well, once again, guys, thanks for watching part one of episode 27 of the Game Corner Podcast. Since the direct started immediately, usually it doesn't start immediately. Usually you get a couple of minutes of uh, waiting screen. So no intro, just getting right into it. Uh, I want to say before I end this part, uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, as well as my friend and partner, Erin Fitzgerald, the voice actress. Uh, all her links and my links are down in the description box down below. As well as Facebook, Black Soccer on Facebook. And uh, check out upcoming videos. I'll be playing Tetris 99 for sure. Probably be streaming it, doing some videos on it. And I'm definitely going to be doing a uh, gameplay video of the Yoshi's Crafted World demo, so look out for that. Again, until part two, guys, this weekend, my name is The Rose. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch your ass down the road.